welcome to everybody that's tuned in from yes, South Africa and from other places. I hope that the service will bless you, and I know it will bless you. So uh, amazing to be with us. Say hi to them. Hi. That's all. That's all. Okay. That's all. <laughs> We've got very excited people in the room here, but thank you that the Lord is going to release His Holy Spirit like Amen. He's releasing it here. He's going to release it into your living room. Yes. And I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do. And um, yes. anything you want to share, Kari? Yes, definitely. God is not limited by what you see in the natural. And I really want to say this. And I know many times we say th certain things and it sounds like a cliche because you don't know it, but I can see some of your eyes, especially those ones that are still trusting God to come with some breakthroughs and stuff. You know, every time you give a word of breakthrough, people's like, mm. Another one. Yes, there is another one because I prophesy God's going to start with an interruption and literally cause an eruption of blessings in your life. And one of the um, people of Kingdom GPS last week phoned me and said, Yo, Kari, can I come and see you? Things are really um, at a T-junction in our lives and things were really very, very hectic. And um, I was supposed to see this person and they didn't know about it, but we were on this side prophesying and praying and really contending with them. You might not know it because we don't always say, but when the Holy Spirit tells us, pray for X, pray for Y, pray for Z, I really, when God tells me to pray, I pray. Mm -hmm. And I know that God will really answer it because it's not about my prayers, but it's because of what He wants to do in your life. Mm -hmm. And this specific person asked me, Kari, pray, I'm in dire straits, and I prayed. And later that day, this person contacted me and said, you will not believe it. That which you prophesied about the double portion just happened today. Today, I got news of a new job. Wow. Today, someone blessed me with a car. Today, someone blessed my children with some stuff and it was everything on one day and I thought wow isn't this exactly yeah, how like, God yeah. does who gives a car away can you remember my word at the beginning of the year and funny enough I said to this lady listen I don't know why all I know is put your dancing shoes on because if you are positioned for dancing God can come and visit you in your place where you are positioned to stand and she's like I don't really feel like it, but okay, I'll do it. I said, just do it, girl. Just do it. Get, find a happy song. Put it on because God's going to come and meet you. And later that evening, she phoned and she said, I will not believe. And she was in tears. And I actually wanted to tell you that I was in tears too because I could not believe God's goodness. Because he's faithful to deliver on every promise, regardless of where you are. He wants to come and show you his love for you if you will only believe. All right. Amen. Anton, do you want to say something? I just want to share something. Um, uh, in Jeremiah 1, the Lord said to the, everybody knows Jeremiah the prophet. God said to him in Jeremiah 1, listen, Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I approved of you. Yes. So, you know, when you are born, doesn't matter through which channel you come, hopefully it's obviously your mother, but... <laughs> but <laughs> But sometimes you, 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 you were born in a terrible family and, you know, some of us just couldn't had, choose it. It couldn't choose it. And you, you, you had a backlog, you know, in the type of family you were born into. But God had a plan with you and God has a plan for your life. It doesn't matter in what family you came into, that ever, thinks, that ever think that you are a mistake or that God didn't mean for you to be born by the way you came in or in the family that you were born in. We see in the scripture, God says, I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. That means that God released your spirit almost like from heaven. You were already in heaven with God and God released you in a certain timeline in, you know, in the earth realm for a purpose and for a destiny. Yes. doesn't matter how dodgy your family is and how dodgy parents you had. God meant for you to come in. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter how you were being conceived. And um, it's, it's terrible, you know, you have to sometimes deal with those things. But God has a plan for you. And God yes. told Jeremiah, I knew you and I approved of you as my chosen instrument even before you were born. Yes. I will say to you, God says, I, have, I knew you, I am approving of you and I have approved of you as my chosen instrument. Yes. And what is the instrument? The instrument is something that you use in, in the hand of somebody. It is, it is an instrument, it is an object that is used by somebody that can be able to do things with those instruments. A doctor uses an instrument in operation. You can use an instrument, but the one who has it in his hands use it the way they want to and the way they please. And God told Jeremiah that I've separated you and I've set you apart for me even in your mother's womb. 
And I've called you as a prophet. I've called you as an apostolic voice. I've called you as a this. I've called you as a that. God has got a kingdom assignment on every one of your heads. Amen. doesn't matter how old or young you are. Believe it. And God says um, to him, this is, this, is, this is the truth. This is what I have over your life. And Jeremiah said, oh Lord, but I'm too young. You know, how can I speak? Because God, God called him at the age of 17 to be a prophet to speak. And I says, I'm too young. And he mentions to God everything that he felt disqualified him. Why do you feel in your heart disqualifies you today for God to be use you? And God said to him, don't say that. Don't say that you're too young. Don't say that you are too sinful. Don't say that you are too this and too that, too unspiritual. Don't say that because God says, because you are an instrument, it is in my hand, it's my power yes. and it is my words that I put in your mouth. It's not your power. And then God touched his mouth and then the Lord said to him, it's my power, it's my words, you're just the instrument. Yes. Amen. God just wants willing vessels to be used. And um, God said, don't mention the things to me that you think disqualify you. And then the Lord Amen. said to him in Jeremiah 1, 12, see as I see. And he saw an almond branch, whatever. But, but he, as he went into and, and saw what God showed him, God said to him, I am alert and I am active watching over my word yes. to perform it. Amen. God says, my part of the deal is, just stay with me. I will watch over my word to perform it. Yes, in Jesus and listen, Lord. sometimes it takes a while. Joseph waited 14 years. Um, Abram waited 20 years, 25 years. You know, sometimes it, it's a process. But as you are faithful, pressing forward, God says, I've appointed you and I've chosen you for yes. a time such as this. So Amen. don't think you are disqualified. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. Just stand as we pray. Father, we just thank you for your anointing in this place to know that we are rooted in your love. Father, thank you that we are much loved by you, that we are much loved and that our trust, our peace and our stability, that we are just reminded today that because you love us, uh, we just prophesy that stability and peace to come back to our emotions, to our minds and our hearts, that, that knowing that he loves you, doesn't matter what you have done, where you are, what you feel disqualifies you. Father, thank you that we can be so sure and have that assurance of your love. We receive it, Lord, because the enemy made us feel that we're unloved, that we're like orphans. But Father, this morning, we just, afternoon, we just say thank you, Father, that we can know that you are our loving Father, that we are rooted in your love. I thank you today, Lord, that we can come before you. We release our faith in the atmosphere. And we say, Father, come and release an anointing, Lord, to totally, totally shift us. Father, release an anointing to shift us into alignment with our minds, with our hearts, Father, with our attitudes, everything where we're out of alignment. I, we give you permission today, Father, to show us. And we humble ourselves today before you and say, Lord, we release our independent spirit. We release our own plans. We release our own, own schemes, our, uh, our own ways of doing things. Yes. We, we even yes. said to you, Lord, I'm upset with you because this or this didn't happen. Lord, forgive us yes. for not understanding, for being disgruntled, Lord, for yes. being blame shifting, blame shifting on everybody, Lord. But Father, today we are repenting of that and say, Lord, we take ownership because it is our process. We need to take ownership of our spiritual journey. And Lord, I thank you for the divine partnership with you today. And Father, whatever you want to be established in our lives today, Father, release it. Father, we receive that anointing to break out and to break free and come in alignment in the name of Jesus. But above all, we humble ourselves before you. And we say, Lord, we repent if there's anything in our lives that is holding us back to the next level, holding us back to move forward, Lord, on this journey that you have for us. Father, I pray that you break the strongholds over my mind. Ask the Lord. Say, Father, I ask today that you break the strongholds, the locks, the belief systems, and the lies over my mind, over my emotions, over every thought. And Lord, I ask today, as the word goes out, that a spirit of truth and righteousness will be released over my life. In the, in the atmosphere and that you show me you those, areas those areas and bring alignment, and bring alignment. in Jesus mighty, in name. Jesus mighty name amen and amen, amen. let's worship issue as the one who has overcome death hell and the grave who has overcome the enemy we have the ability to overcome Jesus I thank you for that same power 
that raised you from the dead, that same power is inside of us, the Bible says. That same power, that same resurrection power is available to you and to me inside of us, in the atmosphere, that same spirit. So, Father, we thank you that we can overcome because you have overcome. Jesus, your resurrection is our resurrection. So Lord, today, by the authority of your word, through the legal blood of Jesus, I prophesy resurrection power, Father, to be released in every person's life that's sitting here. Father, wherever they need a miracle, wherever they need forward mo movement, where they are stuck, Father, I prophesy resurrection power into that place. Into that place, Father. I declare a shift and a change, Lord, into that place. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, let there be a turnaround because of the supernatural power of resurrection. I prophesy resurrection power to fill every person's life that needs a resurrection. That needs a fourth day resurrection. That needs a miracle. That's facing impossibility. That is facing the high level mountains and impossibilities. Demonic walls. In the name of Jesus, I command command those walls to break. I command those possibilities to move in the name of Jesus to give away. Father, that your resurrection power will come, Father, and demolish it through the Holy Ghost, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We connect our faith with that. And I thank you, Father, that is available to us. So we deploy it. We release it into our life. And I thank you, Father, that hope will arise on our insides. I speak hope. And I speak faith into the atmosphere. And I say, arise, man of God. Arise, woman of God. Arise, arise. Tell your spirit, man, to arise. To arise, arise, arise. Put your hand on your stomach and say, spirit of Anton, arise. Say with your name and say, arise. Do it. Again. Say again. Receive new hope. Receive new faith. Receive new strength. Receive, receive new strength. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. How does that feel? I tell you, when you speak to your spirit, man, you need to say, arise. Arise, arise, arise. Because sometimes we just get so down by the circumstances of life and by the things around us and by the long waiting and so many disappointments. And the Lord wants you to know that resurrection power is your portion. And um, the Lord is going to do many resurrections in this season. Even stuff that looks dead like Lazarus. Because I want to remind you that God said again that, that He will get the glory. He wants the glory. And you just need to move and flow with Him. And He will come into those situations and bring impossibilities through the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. Um, because there's so much glory, you know, and the Lord said, you know, He will do it because you have believed. You will see my glory because you have believed. Where's believing God still for some stuff to happen? Okay, and the Lord says, when you believe and don't stop believing, you will see His glory revealed. Because you that's what Jesus told the family of Lazarus. He said to them, it's not this whole sickness, this whole thing has happened so that I can get the glory. And sometimes we think it's our fault. Sometimes we think it's because of something we have done, because God is punishing us, because of different reasons. But the Bible says that the whole thing of Lazarus, God designed it and caused it to happen, um, even the four days in the grave, so that He can get the glory. Sometimes it's not about us. Sometimes it's not about us. Sometimes it's all about Him. And that He wants to get the glory. So don't break your head in thinking, oh why, oh why, oh why. Why, 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 Lord, you know? Um, just know that God is faithful. That power is available to you. And that power can resurrect anything that is dead, that's already dead. We know Lazarus was four days dead already because they believed after three days in that culture, the person's spirit could still hover over the body. So Jesus didn't want to say, I'm resurrecting you within three days. And then they say, oh, well, you know, the Pharisees, the religious spirit says, oh, well, no, you know, it wasn't Jesus. It was just this or that. Jesus waited till it was impossible, according to human standards, to be able to do it. And he did it because of, the, of their faith and because they believed. And Amen. God got the glory. I mean, Amen. the Bible says him and Jesus and Lazarus actually walked together in that next scriptures testifying. The crowds came and said, Lazarus, tell me what happened. And you were dead and then? <laughs> well, you know, 
I was dead. I didn't have any faith, you know. There's <laughs> nothing about me, but it was just amazing, you know. And, and uh, there was just this testimonies that God's going to get you speak about, and it will just be to God's glory. Yeah. How, many, how much faith does, did Lazarus need to be resurrected? Nothing. He, wasn't, he was dead. Okay, so I'm not saying you must, you shouldn't have faith, but you must have. But I'm just saying sometimes God just does it because He wants to get the glory. Mm -hmm. So take courage. No situation is too dead for God to resurrect. Yeah, amen. I'm just saying that I will not let go. And I will believe that because that's what the Bible says. Okay, amen. awesome. Amen. Anybody got something to share? Um, Andreen, come. So I was just experiencing, so um, when things are pressing, and I know in a lot of people's lives, things are really pressing down on them and to a point where you might feel you're overwhelmed. But I just experienced, um, um, don't allow yourself to go to another side and start to fake it till you make it. The line is thin, so don't allow that to happen then. And I experienced that I should, there's like a call from heaven to call out the eagle inside of you. So I'm just going to do that. So in Jesus' name, I just call out the eagle inside of you to arise. Arise in Jesus' mighty name. Because you're more powerful to rise up and to fly and soar above everything around you. And also saw like when um, doves get released, it's like a whole flood of them going up. And I experienced the same with the eagles. Uh, not the eagles, I mean the, the angels. The same were happening with the angels now. So just go. Go with that eagle inside of you. Soar above the circumstances and go with the angels because they are there to help you. In Jesus' name. Amen. It, uh, well, the Holy Spirit gave me a vision. And in the vision was a crippled man. And I was walking with this crippled man into um, this rocky place. And the walls was rocky and everything. And suddenly I started to run through the rocky places. And I heard the Holy Spirit say that he wants to come and visit the, the hardened places in our hearts. And he, and, he, and he wants us to invite him into that places that we don't want to talk about. Amen. Yes, that is what I experienced. As as we were as we were worshiping, I saw this huge wave, but it was like huge as um, Table Mountain, and all of a sudden this wave wa this wave went, and I was on this wave on my bodyboard, and um, and then as I was on the wave, like on this wave, just going for the wave, the Lord just said to me, just go with the. Just go with the flow. Just go with the flow, and I just went. I just went for it, and then all of a sudden, the vision cha it changed, and I was on this dry piece of land somewhere in Africa, and it was the ground was so dry. It was it 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 was it. It was extremely, extremely, um, extremely dry. It was almost like it was, it, the, uh, the, the kind of picture was almost as in the Serengeti, when it's dry in the, uh, when it's dry in the summer and there's, ho there's hardly, there's like no, no, no water. And then all of a sudden I saw angels and they started pouring out buckets and buckets of water. And as they poured out the buckets of water, it actually started, it started raining as they poured this buckets of, um, as they poured this buckets of water. And as they um, poured this buckets of water, I started seeing the animals started to drinking from the water pools. And then all of a sudden, from up, from the north I saw a river started flowing and it started flowing and all of a sudden I was standing in this uh, I was like standing in this river and I was like standing in this river by myself and I asked the Lord Lord why am I standing alone in this river and I felt the father said that it's for every individual it's for the in individual this river is for the individual and I felt the father said that th there was an invitation um, to come to this to, to, to come to this river, um, river and then all of a sudden I saw the picture changing 
And I saw the angels again. I saw them pouring out buckets and buckets and buckets of water, um, like from like from heaven. So seeing them pouring out buckets and buckets of water, then all of a sudden I saw uh, like a multitude of like a multitude of people. And as I saw the multitude of people, I saw them in a re- like a receiving mode. And as I saw them as a receive in a receiving mode, suddenly. I saw the angels as well in a receive in a receiving mode, and it just started raining and raining and raining and raining. It was like a refreshing. It was like a refreshing kind of re- um, a rain that just fell upon us as a people and on the angels as on the angels as well. And I felt like Father says he he is just pouring out a refreshment on us as a people. So, Father, we just receive. We just receive that. Let's just re- Father, we just receive the refreshing power of Your rain, Lord. I thank You that this is the season where the rain from heaven, the spiritual rain, the rain is going to come, Father, on the dry places, on the dry lands, Lord. Father, we receive that rain. We receive that refreshment over our life. We receive the rain, the provision, spiritual provision, physical provision. Father, we thank you for this word and we receive it, Father. Father, give us the grace to be rightly positioned at this time to be able to receive it. And Lord, run to you and and be in receiving mode and not running away mode, not rejecting you, Lord. I thank you, Father. It's a corporate release that you have promised in this season. You are a faithful God. You are a faithful God, and we honor you for that, and we receive it by faith, Lord, in Jesus' name. During this week, I actually just had in my spirit the whole week this phrase, do not limit the Holy One of Israel. Do not limit the Holy One of Israel. And then I eventually looked up the scripture, and it's in Psalm 78, verse um, 40 to 42, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. It says, How many times they rebelled in the desert days, how they grieved him with their grumblings. Again and again they limited God, preventing him from blessing them. Continually they turned back from him and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They forgot his great love, how he took them by the hand, and with redemption's kiss he delivered them from their enemies. And I just... um, as I was meditating on that, it just came to my understanding that the Israelites came from slavery from 400 years, from generations of slavery. And maybe, and I know this word was very much for myself, but maybe it's also for people, I believe, on Zoom and here that you've come from generations of certain difficulties or certain things that it's, it's, you can't even almost imagine what God has promised you or what he's told you he's going to do. You have no reference point for it. You don't have any personal experience of it. So it's very difficult to have an understanding that there is a promised land and that it could be all and more than you could imagine. But I just really feel like God is saying like in this time, like don't limit me by by having a small vision or by by going by your previous experience or your previous understanding or even by your entire life maybe or your generations or your family don't look and compare your life with your family or generations understand and trust that God has a good plan for you and believe him because it is it is our faith and the Bible says through faith and patience that we inherit his promises and I just believe that in this time and I just want to say in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you Lord that we can all just receive a greater increase Lord of the gift of faith Lord that in this time Lord especially in the end of the year Lord that we will not limit what you can do in our lives Lord I thank you that you just break off any limiting mindsets or belief systems Father or anything of our even our personal experiences, Father, that would try and limit what you want to do in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that we will walk in the fullness of all that you have for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In mighty name. And let's just say, Father, we just repent of murmuring and complaining yes. because that waters unbelief. Father, we repent of a grumbling, murmuring spirit, Lord, and feeling disgruntled, Lord, because we are tired, Father, and we are overwhelmed by emotions. So, Father, we just ask you forgiveness because because of the grumblings and the murmuring and the complaining that you lifted the hedges and the snakes came in and bit the Israelites. So, Father, wherever we have murmured and complained and delayed your promises, we ask forgiveness for that. Lord, we are so sorry. And I ask that you wash us clean with your blood and forgive us today, Father. And reset us and readjust us in the spirit where we have caused delays and we have caused our own blockages. And we ask by the blood of Jesus to remove it. And we are sorry for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I just, um, 
sense in my spirit that God is calling like probably all of us to just uh, stir a greater hunger in us and calling us to be a people unto himself. And um, there's a scripture in, um, I'm going to read it in 1 Samuel 12 and I'm going to read 20, verse 21, 22 and 24 and it says, and turn not aside after vain and worthless things which cannot profit or deliver you for they are empty and futile. The Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, for it has pleased him to make you a people for himself. And just the first part where it says, do not turn aside to vain and worthless things which cannot profit or deliver you. Only God can profit or deliver us. The Bible says God is our source. Um, and there's a scripture also that says um, promotion doesn't come from the east or the west, but it comes from God. And then in verse 24, it says, only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart for consider how great are the things he has done for you and a holy fear of God it's not being scared of him it's being scared of being away from him and it's a drawing near it's letting him stir your heart and it's allowing and it's being grateful for what he has done and being expectant for what he is going to do as you position yourself in his presence as you position yourself in obedience to whatever he's leading you to do so. Amen. <laughs> I've just got one scripture that I want to share that I actually um, had last week and uh, this uh, in pre-prayer just came up that there's a lot of anxiety and fear going around and um, I just have John 14 in the Amplified verse 27 and he says there, Jesus speaking, says, Peace I leave with you, my own peace and you can just close your eyes if you're experiencing stress, you want to receive it. I'm just going to speak this one. Back onto our own addictions, our own comfort. We think, oh, I could, if I can just do that, if I can just have another 10 drinks, or if I can just do this or that, then I will have peace, or I can just escape from my situation. But we need the peace that God gives. All the other peace of, uh, is fake, and it's not sustainable. Um, in prayer, prayer um, we actually ask the Lord to give us a key or a strategy to overcome and to wait upon him. And as we were worshiping, I just felt the Lord said, can you praise and thank me for the no's in your life? Wow. So um, if, you, if you experience any no's, whether it's in a job opportunity, whether it was in relation no, opportunities whatever your case if you have experienced a no from him praise him Amen. for that Amen. and you will see the rest will follow Amen. Okay. Amen. That's good. worship i god just started reminding me of all the good things he has done in my life all the testimonies and suddenly he took me to the beach and I was, and I saw people picking up seashells, like, you know, like dead, you know, like, you know, like the animals that were dead, their shells, this, their, 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 their like little houses they had, you know, like a crab or so. And I saw just all these shells. And I suddenly, I saw people, you know, that you pick up, you know, seashells. And then how suddenly I saw they were like in a, you know, like stacked at home in a cupboard for everyone to look at and to enjoy. And I felt just God said that, um, so many of us have testimonies that are like standing like trophies in our cupboard, you know, like a a um, a wonder of the of what it was, you know. And I felt how God did is bring us into a season where we're gonna start living testimonies again. We're gonna start getting testimonies again. It won't just be something that's you know a reminder or a memorial. It's something that we're gonna start living in. And I just wanna pray for each and every person, Father. I pray. Now each and every person, Father, yeah, that feels like all they have are testimonies, but they're not living and seeing that happening in Father in situations that are really trusting you for God. Father, I release new testimonies to people. Yes, testimonies, Father. I thank you, Father, that the, the, it won't just stay in the old and the past. It will be relived and even doubled in the future right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So when Jesus came to Capernaum, he, he, there was a house 
and Jesus started preaching there, but there was a whole crowd in that house, and even at the door, there was a lot of people, and then four men came, and they brought their friend on a mat, and he was paralyzed, and when they came there, they couldn't get to Jesus, and so they went to the roof, they make a hole in the roof, and they dig it through, and then they lower this man on the mat, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. I was thinking, ah, oh, this man came for healing, but what did the Lord tell him? Your sins are forgiven. And that, what amazes me also is then Jesus said, the scribes, those that learn and teach the law of the Old Testament, they were sitting there thinking in their heart, who's this man? Only God can forgive sins. And who's this fellow? And he's blaspheming. And then Jesus said to them, what are you thinking, these things? Did you know that Jesus know what we think? And Jesus said to them, what, what is easier to do, to say your sins is forgiven, forgiven or to say, get up, take your mat and go? And Jesus said, God can forgive your sin, but Jesus, the son of man, is God and he can forgive sin. And so he said to that man, get up, take your mat and go home. And what amazes me is, you know how ridiculous it sounds? What would you do if you brought your friend now to Jesus picture that for you there's a lot of crowd you'd maybe go home and say there's no opportunity to get to him and I just want to share something short that happened to me yesterday I decided I'm not going anywhere um, I'm going to seek the face of God and trusting him for something that in my own life and then I got a call of a friend and invited me to a prayer meeting and immediately I say no and he said please just come and the Holy Spirit said to me tell them you'll go for the last hour I was like, Lord, who's going for the last hour? And the Lord said, go. And they sent me a link. I told them that. They were quiet. And, and they sent me a link. The link, the GPS took me on a whole different road. I had to pray in tongues to get to the road. <laughs> the, the place, uh, what would I think? At that moment, I said, Lord, I'm going to turn around. I didn't want to come to this. Now I'm lost. I'm going home now. The Lord said, you go. I found the place. Parking was a problem. They said, very far distant that I had to walk. It was warm. On my way, I pray in tongues because I'm now really challenged. And as I start praying in tongues, the Lord starts showing me people in that prayer meeting that I didn't know nobody of. The Lord started downloading, giving me word. And when I got there, I just sneak in the prayer meeting and they were praying for the one man and the one, uh, two women. And when they're done, they're closing. I was thinking, Lord, all this and how they, they're done. And suddenly the one man, he started telling me, he said to me, you, there was someone in your family, that person did a lot for God. Now nobody knows me, nobody knows that my parents were pastors. Now you would know, somebody that doesn't know you just have to tell you one thing that nobody knows to let you know this is God. Mm. That person got my attention. And he started sharing me a few words that I was speaking to the Lord about, that I was shocked I haven't told anybody about. And then he said, he end off like this, not m amazing things and direction in my life, just stuff that you talk about to God and mention to God, stuff like that. And then he end off and he said, you're a prophet and I'm trusting the Lord for direction in my own life one day for myself from you. And the Lord said, that word that I gave you on the way, that's for him. And I said, and I shared that with him, and I, and I said to him, somebody in your family died an unnatural death. His eyes were big. He said, my mother. I said, yes, the Lord, showing me your mother didn't pass away naturally. He said, it's true. I said, and that thing want to take you out, and you died a near death um, many times. And I gave him a short word about the relationship. And when we're done, there was another guy, and the Lord showed me he's got an um, adulterous relationship. And I was tired, and I said, you guys need to pray for this man. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, what are you doing? Pray for him now. And I asked this man if he wanted to give his life to the Lord, and he gave his life to the Lord just there. And then there was a woman, and the previous night as I was talking to the Lord, I was really tired. The Lord just, just giving me downloads. I want to sleep. I said, Lord, I'm tired. And the Lord just gave me downloads and downloads, and the Lord said to me, that that I spoke to you last night was not for you, it's for this woman. And she wanted to give up on her marriage, and she was really depressed. And the Lord said, counsel her. And I start talking to her, and then this woman stand up and she said, yo, when you came in this room, the whole, the whole atmosphere shifted. And then I heard Anton saying, 
Anton said, you guys will shift atmospheres. And I was like shocked. And we went, we went back to our cars and it was a long walk. And as we walked there, we were standing on the pavement with our cars. Some of the people were already left. And then this man that I gave this word about the relationship, he said to me, you know what? I was fasting 14 days for the Lord, for this relationship. And here the Lord sends you and tell, tell me exactly what I need to do with this woman. And I was shocked. And he said, and by the way, and then he gave me another word for that, what I was trusting and, and fasting for, just like that. He gave me a scripture, Cardi. The, the Saturday morning, I just, I know Cardi's busy. I sent her a message about the stuff that I'm trusting the Lord. She sent me a scripture back. That man gave me the word and he, see, and he gave me the exact same scripture that you sent me the morning. I am shocked. The Lord said to me, you didn't want to go like that people that go through the roof. It's, and it sounds crazy to go at the end of the stuff, but you're obedient, you walk. I want also to turn around and leave. And I got my blessing as well, my answer too. Blessing, he just, as you need a blessing, he uses you to bless other people. That's how the kingdom works. We just have to be obedient. God hears our prayers and he answers us and he is mindful of us. Yeah, amen. The Holy Spirit goes. Marisa, thank you for that. Um, that's very really encouraging. I was saying to Anton, maybe um, I should not share now and share at the end. And his eyes just went, you know, like big. And so I, I got the message. So um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I know I've got a word of the Lord for you. And um, as I was worshiping yesterday morning, you know that sometimes we've got stuff in our hearts. And, you know, you try to push through and you worship. And, but you've got this thing on your mind that's constantly on your mind. So I was really just bringing some stuff before the Lord. And then I felt the Holy Spirit say it to me, just shift, focus on me, focus on me. And I went down on my knees on the carpet and I put my music on and I just really just worshiped Jesus. The next moment I saw, remember my face is on my knees on the carpet, a hand coming out to me holding a card out to me and I got such a shock I looked up and I saw an incredible incredible big angel it was so big that it had to bend down to where I was with my nose on the carpet it bent down and put his hand right there and it was a yellow card he held to me and I looked up because I was so shocked and the angel disappeared I just stood there and I said, like, what just happened? And why a yellow card? Of all things, a yellow card. And I jumped up on my feet and I started praying in tongues. I said, Holy Spirit, what does it mean? What do you want to say to us? And I clearly heard the Holy Spirit say to me, the Father is saying, tell my children that I'm going to cause a divine interruption in every plan where the enemy has caused a disruption in your life, where it has caused a demonic delay to your promises and to the uh, fulfillment of the assignment that I have on your life. And God said, no, no, God said, ask me for the yellow card. I said, Lord, the yellow card. And I'm like, I'm not really my, into sport. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Google a yellow card in rugby. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So now I go, I Google yellow card in rugby. And those of you that understand rugby, I know we've got some people here that knows rugby. For me, it was a revelation because I am not so much into rugby. And it says a yellow card is dealt to a player by the referee the moment when there is foul play. The moment... When he gets that card, it says he has to go off the court for 10 minutes, which gives the other team an advantage to start in the, on the field to start operating. And I again heard the father say, 
ask me for a divine yellow card because that will cause the enemy to withdraw on every side where there has been an interruption in your life. We has caused delays. We has caused certain things to happen not the way God promised you it was going to happen. Where you see there's an interference, God says, ask me for a yellow card because I will force him to withdraw immediately. Because the enemy has overplayed his hands. And the Lord reminded me that many times in our lives we come to a place that we say, Lord, is it really worth it? Because it's been on every side. Who knows what I'm talking about? And it's like, Lord, what else should I pray? And I'm 100% sure many of you are sitting here today thinking, Lord, I don't know what to say anymore. And my word to you is to say, the Father said, ask me for a yellow card because that will cause the enemy to withdraw on every side and it will give you a, adv an advancement. It will reposition you, give you your focus back, give you your strength back so that you can run without being weary until you can fulfill and complete the assignment that the Father has given you. The Lord says there is a divine interruption coming so that you can be repositioned for the assignment. And that actually makes me think about Daniel. And just quickly, you all know Daniel. Imagine being brought up in Jerusalem and then being taken as a captive to go to a demonic nation where they worship Satan himself. They were so full of witchcraft and they captured Daniel as a young boy and they've placed him in the palace with a Babylonian king. And the Bible said the moment he landed there, go and read it, it's in Daniel 1.8. Daniel determined with his heart he will not eat their delicacies. He will not defile himself by their customs, by their beliefs, by what they pray, by what they do. He set his mind like a flint and determined in his heart he is going to worship the Father. And because of the decision he made before the time, God said, God placed favor upon him and everyone around him liked him. But that did not cause the enemy to withdraw. The favor on his life attracted the attention of the enemy. And many times we are in our lives and we say, Lord, why so many attacks? It's because of the greatness that you are carrying and the enemy can see it. And he will try to come and derail you on every side because as the Father has literally placed you in a place to bring forth his glory, the enemy saw it and he wants to come and stop you. And I believe that as there were so many attacks on Daniel's life, the ultimate one was probably when they forced him to bow down to a demonic statue. You all know the story. It has invoked so much anger in the enemy that he decided that he is going to throw him into a lion's den to kill him as a final blow. And what happened? I truly believe if we can look at the replay, and that's probably one of the videos I'm going to watch in heaven, and we look at the replay, he was probably that moment when he was thrown into the lion's den I believe his prayers has caused the father to take out a yellow card and say to the enemy, you are not allowed to in any form, in any way, interfere anymore with my son because of the assignment on his life and I lock your mouth. And I believe it was because of the assignment that Daniel had to bring forth God's glory and to tell a demonic nation. And he was, he was outliving four kings. He outlived four kings. His assignment was to bring forth God's power and God's glory in a demonic nation. And I want to say to you, it might just be because of the greatness the Father has placed upon your life that the enemy is constantly trying to stop and block you and interfere you. But God says, ask me for the yellow card. About four years ago, Anton, 
was diagnosed with something in a medical condition. And it really became quite intense. So much so that he was on medication constantly and it brought about such an interruption in our lives and we said Lord this is not on we know we have an assignment but we are facing with something that is so real who knows what I'm talking about sometimes there's just stuff re regardless of how much you trust and believe and he went back and he got some medications and every time the report came back and it was even worse than the next time and then there was a prophetic conference and I said to Anton, Anton, I believe we need to go to this prophetic conference, regardless of what's going on currently in our lives, with the medication and all the negative reports. And as we walked into that prophetic meeting, the morning, the prophet stood up and as he started speaking, he said, before I continue, I feel that I want to just say, I want to explain what is the difference between the office of a prophet and having a prophetic gift. And he called Anton, he didn't know Anton. He called him out, he said, let me explain the gift of the prophet. And as Anton came out and he stood in front, he said, he immediately slipped into the role of the prophet and he said, wait a minute, there's a demonic interruption in your assignment and the enemy has tried to put the sickness that has killed your father-in-law upon you but God says because you are here I'm breaking you out so that you can complete the assignment that I have for you and suddenly that thing was broken he didn't know us the same like Marissa said suddenly that thing was broken because there was a divine yellow card from heaven to say no more will you come and interrupt the assignment that I've placed upon Anton's life and there was a supernatural turnaround and I want to prophesy to you wherever you are whoever you are whatever it is where the enemy is interfering in your assignment where he's interfering in your family in your finances in your work situation as a prophet I call for a divine yellow card from heaven to be sent to the enemy concerning your life concerning your family concerning your situation so that the father said so that he will have to withdraw so that you can regroup so that you can get your strength back and so that you can fulfill and complete your assignment in jesus name amen and amen testimony amen. so you stare death in the face and you don't even you don't even know it hmm. let me take my so, so the Lord is faithful, and I promise you, if you stay in alignment with Him, He will break you out and break you free from wherever you need to get out of, to fulfill your assignment. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the Lord will just reorder your footsteps so you can come to a place where you just really, really, really can fulfill your assignment. And um, I know if you cry out to the Lord, He will really come and, and, and do that for you. Um, okay, let me, let me share what the Lord has put on my heart and I. I'm so excited because in pre-prayer, we literally, I thought that the scriptures were coming forth and I thought, oh, somebody looked at my sermon today. What's going on? And it blesses me so much when, when the scripture starts coming out. I said, but that's, that's what I felt the Lord put in my heart. So it's a blessing to me and I want you to, uh, we don't have a lot of time, but we're going to end, we're going to pray and we're going to ask the Lord to shift some things. Okay, so one of the keys that i was thinking about we, we the body of christ is really of god has the body of christ really in uncertain times really turbulent times really t times that is really uncertain for a lot of people and uh, we're on this journey with the lord and we literally go step by step and get revelation as we go and um, nobody has that roadmap you know what i'm talking about so in this uncertain times because we're in covenant with god the, we need to know that god is during instability and in these times, God is busy remaking and remolding us. We're not, our foundation is not falling out. We're not going to be destroyed. But, but when we go through turbulence and uncertain times, God wants you to know that He is busy remaking and remolding you into something new. So what God wants us to do is if we first need to understand that, and God's purpose with that is, um, to be able to shift us and to change us more into the image of Jesus Christ and get us ready for the new season that he, uh, where He wants to give us um, what He wants to give us and we'll be able to have that posture to be able to steward it. So you need to allow God to remake and remold you. Some people don't like it. 
God is the potter and we are the clay. clay. What do you know when you have a pot and you break it and you put water on it and you know that hands of the Lord is working you on that wheel and you're spinning and he's shaping you and shifting you into something new. Who knows that that's hurtful and, and sometimes very, very, um, very uh, disturbing and very uncomfortable. But God is saying, firstly, know that during these times I am the turbulence and whatever you're going through is a remaking and remolding for my side. Will you flow with me? Will you allow me to do it? Amen. Or are you going to resist me in rebellion and uh, because of a lack of understanding turn your back on me? And if you know that God will remake, remold and, sh and, and, and shape you in the way He wants you to, to so that you can be better, you flow with that process because you know He's a loving Father and He wants to shift things. So for me, it's quite important to know that this remaking and re, uh, remolding, this process involves mainly two things. And the first thing is uprooting old thought processes, uprooting old pro uh, from your life. Because everything starts in your thought. And the word uproot is a violent word. It means to pull out, to plug out. You know, And it's hurtful sometimes because our, our old thought processes cause our behavior to not be in line with God. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So your thought drive your actions. So if you have old thought processes, old twisted ways and twisted means of thinking and wrong ways of thinking about God, wrong ways of thinking about what's happening, what the God's love, everything is shiver, you know, it's twisted many times in our own families. How we receive love from our parents and you know, just our perception of God. Sometimes our oh, God's like my dad, you know, he's angry or he's this or he's unfair. And our belief systems in our thought process is tainted with how we think about God and God is not that person he's not so God needs to shift your mindset and your thought processes to come in line with the Word of God so that you can have a right way of thinking so the, the and the other thing is the changing of your speech those two processes has to do with the remolding and the remaking of you during this two years plus that we are going through as the body of Christ so your speech your speech um, if, you, if, you, if the murmuring, the complaining, the negativity, the stuff that's going out from your mouth can either cause you to get into your destiny or to miss your destiny. Remember what we said last year, because God said, the words of your mouth, you are the prophet of your own destiny. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Everything you blurt out every day because you feel negative or down, those things have consequences. They are transactions in the spirit. And what happens is, it keeps you from... It brings delays. Your words, negative words, murmuring, complaining, all those uh, negative stuff that you speak that is not in alignment with God's words, bring delays in your life. It stops you from tasting and seeing the Lord's goodness. And then you're saying, but Lord, but why are you not coming through for me? Why is it not happening? Because of your speech. So the remolding and the reshifting, when the pressure is on, when you're in uncertain times, when they're shaking, when there's all types of things happening, God is challenging your belief systems, your, your, your thought processes, and your speech. You know me, how long we've been talking about speech. Because, because you can either decree life or decree death. It's your choice. Because God didn't make us robots. You have choices. And you can't be angry with God when you are negative and when you are cursing your own destiny. And especially with your thought process. The thought processes has to do with the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So the thought processes is all about, um, the Bible talks about repentance means change the way you think. Yeah. You thought repentance means, oh Lord, I'm so sorry, I won't do it again. And then next week you do it again. The Greek or the Hebrew word for repentance means change the way you think. And God says, if you can, uh, you can get rid of the old thought processes, the old programming, and allow me to uproot it violently, because the war is in your mind. The battle is in our minds. Isn't it? The Bible says the war is in your mind. And God says, in that, that is the place where you need to take every thought captive, deal with the temptation before it manifests into behavior. Because it's thought and then it goes to behavior. So God wants, if you've got bad behavior, it starts in the thought process. That's why God says, I want to uproot part of this remolding and remaking of you on my potter's wheel. Will you allow me? Will you allow me? Will you work with me? And say, oh, it's so sore, Lord, but press me. Oh, it's so sore, Lord. Yes. You know, because there's, there's pride and there's things that comes in and, and these mindsets, suddenly there's stuff around you happening that is not nice, but it doesn't mean it's not God. God is shifting many of us into a new season and it's uncomfortable and God wants you to say you have to make that shift. It's not a nice shift, but you have to make it. It's uncomfortable. Don't think it's not me because it's uncomfortable. 
God can be in it. But it's a necessary shift my son and my daughter to make to get you where I need to be, where you need to be. It doesn't mean God's not in it. So what happens is you must, you must work with God. You must allow Him to work by letting the truth come to you. Because I can say things here and you sit in your chair and you think, oh, I'm so tired of getting that, you know. And there the mindset goes up and it blocks me. Are you going to allow the truth of God's word to come and penetrate this old thought processes? Because if the truth comes, you thought, but oh, I have a long, wrong belief system. And suddenly God can uproot that belief system from your, from your mind. Because repentance means change the way you think. Now they have, they have uh, done medical tests to say that sometimes when you have a thought pattern, there's a button that's being pushed, a trigger, and then suddenly you have a thought pattern that goes and manifests into behavior. They've done a, done a scan of people's brains and they actually saw that when you have a certain behavioral pattern, there's a little groove, remember? The, the difference between the groove and the grave is the death. So the groove. So what happens, they've tested that if somebody has a behavioral pattern, Something triggers you, you go in a certain behavioral pattern, there's a groove in your brain that forms, a little chemical pathway they call it. And every time you have that trigger, you have the same behavior. Then they've tested and say, if you take the word of God and you confess certain scriptures over your problem. So you have a problem with fear. For example, you take the scriptures that talks about fear. When you start confessing the fear, those scriptures to your problem, when you start confessing that scriptures, the power, as, am I ready? The power of the Holy Spirit comes in. You just think it's a scripture you are reading. God hasn't given me a script, a spirit of fear, but He has given me a spirit of power. He's given me a spirit of love, and I have a sound mind. So don't tell me I'm, I'm this and that. I've got a sound mind, okay? The Bible, it's been proven as you decree that scripture, the power of the Holy Spirit, there's a power that comes and backs up that word and something supernatural happened. After three weeks, they've shown and done tests that a new chemical pathway, a new little pathway in your mind forms, which results in a new behavioral pattern. Isn't that amazing? That when you, God has designed the scriptures, if you, if you confess that scripture and you pound your problem with the scripture, say, I will not fear. 21 days it takes to break a cycle. They show that your brain will form a new chemical pathway. And that's how you uproot all thought processes. But you must first admit that you have a problem. I'm at the pen and said, Lord, check me out. Scan me. Every wrong way of thinking, my wife tells me, Anton, you are like this. I'm saying, oh, Lord, I'm wrong. Show me. My kids say, oh, Dad, you, oh, Lord, show me. Oh, I'm desperate. I'm desperate to get this uprooted. Nothing must block me from moving into the new. I'm just saying, Lord, I, 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 I'm not going to resist anybody telling me, oh, I see this and I hear this. I need, to, I need to investigate it. Because many people sitting here and they say, I don't tell me what to do. I'll do my own thing. They have an independent spirit. God, don't tell me what to do. I'll do my own thing. I have my own plans. Don't tell me how many times you've said that now to me. God doesn't help me. God, that's mindsets. That's respect. That is mindsets of religious programming, legalism. It's programming. You know when you have spies, they program them. They pull out their nails, throw them in the cold water, slap them 10 times, <laughs> maybe 20 times. And then, and, then, and then they program them to be like robots. Some people are programmed. We are programmed generationally in the culture that we are in, with the parents we grow up. They painted on our canvas. Everything that they're programming, that must be undone. And, and some of those mindsets and thought processes are contrary to God's word and contrary to what God wants to, to do in your life. It's a belief system. It's your belief system. So I'm at the point where I say, check me out, Lord. Amen. So I want to encourage you. To, that is, uh, submit to God, ask Him, Lord, show me those old thought processes. And if you, if you pound it with the truth, it will, be, it will break and it will be uprooted, but you must be able to receive the truth in humility. Yeah. We must take ownership. We cannot blame shift. Yeah. It's Anton and Kari's fault that I'm not in my destiny yet. It's their fault. It's their responsibility. It's my mother that did it. It's my dad that did it. It's that person. People blame shift. They don't take responsibility. It is your responsibility for this process, yeah, yeah. not uh, you and the Holy Spirit working together, not people's responsibility. Yeah. 
So I want to say to you that God is busy forming a path for you. You are already on a path. The road that you are on might not make sense to you at the moment. Whose roads that you are on doesn't make, really make a lot of sense at the moment? Three people. Okay, wonderful. Okay, just, just be bold. Okay, it doesn't mean it's the wrong path. It doesn't mean it's the wrong path. And um, we, we see in the Bible, when Joseph ended up in the pit, it seemed like an end. But the pit was actually a connection point to a new beginning and a new uh, beginning of a new destiny point in his life. And you think it's the end. I want to say to you, wherever you feel in your life, it's the end. It's not the end. It's just a springboard for a new beginning. Amen. So uh, what about that mindset? Get your mindset. So don't keep on. God says don't stop moving. This road ahead of you might be hard. You, I might want you to shift. And, and it, it's maybe not going to be easy. It doesn't mean I'm not in it. And God says as you move and keep on moving on this road, I'll give you a revelation. I'll help you to decode the revelation. Just keep on moving. Just keep on swimming. Just keep on swimming. You know that. Just keep on moving. Don't stop. Oh, I'm like, oh, no. I'm depressed. No, God. That's why we need to hook shields. You need to take your buddy and take his hand and say, come. We are coming to church. We are going, come. I'm helping you up. Don't, oh, no, come. You know, like in the war, they help each other up and say, come, let's keep on moving to find solutions. And Jeremiah 33.3. Oh, that's a tongue tie. That's like banana. You just know, need to know when to stop. <laughs> Jeremiah 33.3 is God's phone number. Who knows that? God says, call on me. And I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you did not know. Is there some things you did not know that you do not know? God says, pick up the phone, call me. My number is 33.3. Call me, I'll show you great and mighty things, hidden things that you did not know. God is saying, I will. I will. I will. Not may. Oh, maybe. May. No, I will. If you call on me, I will show you. Don't be weary. Ask me, I'll show you, and I will show you great and mighty things that you did not know, and I'll give you, help you to decode it to move forward. The path is not necessarily easy, so don't think it's, God is not in it. You might have a mindset that, oh, well, breakthrough must be easy. This road is the wrong road. It might be the right road. And God wants you to shift, and He'll give you the grace to do it. So we are an exciting time. We've moved into a new prophetic season. We've moved into the Hebrew month of Kislev about two days ago. And we know on God's calendar, every month on God's calendar in the biblical calendar has a specific prophetic meaning. So that's so important to look at what God wants to do in every month on His calendar. And this Hebrew month of Kislev is an amazing month. And... Um, Every month and every word in the Hebrew alphabet is connected to a letter. So the letter connected and associated to this month is the Hebrew letter Samek. S-A-M-E-K-H. And every letter has a picture as well connected to it. Guess what the picture is of this month and this word? It is a, it is a picture of a circle or a ring or a repeating cycle. So God is saying we've moved into a prophetic timeline in on heaven's calendar where I... And bringing things in your life again full circle. There's a full cycle. Which means that, that God wants to give you a second chance. When you've completed a cycle on God's calendar. This is where you are. God is saying I'm releasing a second chance to you. In this time to confront and deal things with things that have defeated you in the past season. God is saying I'm giving you a second chance. A second opportunity. This is what it, this is what it means prophetically. To deal with things that have defeated you. And the past season and confront and deal with it. It's coming around again. It is a month when God says, again, I want you to move in a whole new cycle. And I'm also giving you a second chance for missed opportunities. So you are facing things that have defeated you. I'm giving you another chance to face them. Secondly, I am giving you a second chance for missed opportunities. Who's had some missed opportunities? And you're so angry with yourself. Say, so why did I miss it? Yeah. And you can't forgive yourself when you nurse, curse, and rehearse it over and over in the theater of your mind. God said, disperse it. Release it. I'm giving you another chance. Lekker, ne? Lekker. So there's another chance. And you know, I see when Moses messed up. Uh, remember Moses messed up. He was in Egypt. He killed the Egyptian. And because he messed up, because he committed murder, he was kicked out of um, Egypt. And at that time uh, was over. And then that end, like with Joseph, is instituted a new pathway for him to go into the desert for the next phase of his journey of 40 years in the desert for training. 
And then God gave him another opportunity when he appeared to him at the burning bush. And they said, you've messed up in Egypt. I'm giving you another chance. And God says, now I'm sending you to Egypt to go and deal with those things. So we saw God as the God of second chances if you have missed opportunities. So we say, Lord, wherever you have missed opportunities, wherever you felt that you have been defeated in the last season, God has given you another chance to fight against those things in the name of Jesus. So we shouldn't miss this. This is a Kairos time the next month in the spiritual realm uh, for a second chance to do certain things. It is, we're in a time of decision. Um, and with a lot of missed opportunities, there's also the danger that old enemies can come back. So God wants us in this season also to be, on the, uh, to be sober and vigilant and be on guard. Because the enemy is prowling around you. So the Lord is saying, this is a month where I want you to break out of old cycles. Old cycles, many, many are still trapped in destructive cycles. And God wants to, you to get free this month. And this is linked to the destructive thought patterns, your, uh, your uprooting of this thought patterns and behavioral patterns. This is the army to do because you're not getting out of the cycles, so you can't go further with God. God wants you to come higher, but you suck in this old cycles and you say, Lord, I don't know what to do. And the Lord is saying, what, what warfare are you going to implement to deal with these cycles? Because there's a grace to deal with the cycles. I want to break it in your life. So, so the other day somebody asked me, um, I've got a destructive cycle in my life. I am going to, how do I deal with it? I have now implemented a warfare strategy and I'm going to deal with this area of my life um, where I'm going to pray and fast and then I'm going to trust the Lord to break it. Who knows that you break destructive cycles through deploying spiritual weapons? Amen. And we have to plan and we have to say, Lord, I am, well, firstly, you must be open and honest that you have that cycle. Because people have addiction and they enjoy every minute of it. Oh, leave me alone. It's just my little pleasure, you know. It's a little itty, you know. I'm just, you know, I'm, I've made a deal with the devil. Just a little something on the side, you know. Um, if you leave me alone, I'll leave him alone. Blah, blah, blah. That's a lie. Never leaves you alone. So no sideline deals. God says, I'll break the cycles, but you have to have a warfare strategy. What is your warfare strategy? Jesus said to his disciples, you're not delivering that guy because that type, there's different types, only comes out through prayer and fasting. So maybe you're dealing with a tough type in your life, a tough, <laughs> tough cycle. <laughs> a tough type of addiction of a cycle of a, it's not only that, but maybe you are prayerless. Maybe you only pray to God when you have a crisis. Otherwise your prayer life is dead. Otherwise I can't do this, you know, I can't do. What is your cycle that you're battling with, that you fall back every time? You have to have a warfare strategy. So, so say, Lord, I'm going to fast so many days a week. I'm going to make a list and I'm going to pray and fast and I'm going to trust you to break this thing and, and push in in the name of Jesus to do that. Sometimes you can do something, different strategies. Nighttime prayers is amazing. Praying in tongues for an hour at night. Get up to do something different that you've never done before to get results you never had before. And um, I'm a creature of habits. Okari is not like that. So she's challenging me. Thank you for my wife. She's just amazing. She challenges me to get out of the box because I'm a box person. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that, eh? She says, no, no, we have to do it the other way. Let's do it different. I said, why? <laughs> it's so hard. That's why you have to do it something different. So I'm so glad for her. She really keeps me um, out of the cycles and help me to, to be able to do things in, in a fresh and a new way. Because that breaks really these things. So there's a grace that God wants to help you to break out of it. But you have to decide what is my warfare strategy that I'm going to do. Okay, and then this is a month where God is going to speak through dreams and night visions in a great way. Get your pens, get your paper next to your bed. If you wake up, you get a clear dream. Write it down because God is going to speak to you and give you new revelations specifically in this month through dreams. Who dreams a lot? Okay, you might dream you think it's a pizza dream. No, maybe God gives you some revelation about what you need. God is speaking all the time, but many times we are not tuned in. The radio is not tuned in. We're not on the frequency, but God is speaking. I said, Lord, I, if you're speaking, I want to be on the frequency. So tune the radio. So, so write down your dreams. Get a dream dictionary. Uh, you know, we, we've got resources or whatever, and God can speak to you through dreams powerfully and give you the revelation that you need. Kislev in this month is associated with the tribe of Benjamin. 
the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin, quickly, was the, was, the, was the youngest son of Jacob. And he was the only son of Jacob that was born in the promised land. And he was a prophetic sign of a promise. But he's the only one who said, this is a sign. Because many times God works with a sign and with signs and wonders. He said, this guy, this little boy is a sign of the promise that you're going to inherit. That you're going to occupy. This little boy. And what happens if you have a calling and a purpose on your life? The devil comes. You're not even out of the womb. Even in the womb, he tries to destroy that calling. He tries to destroy that uh, identity that God has for you. And he was supposed to be a son of promise. Look what the enemy came. When he had a, the mom, Rachel, had a difficult childbirth. And as she was, she, it was a terrible childbirth. And she actually died uh, when having him. And at, when she pushed out the last breath, she just said, Oh, you know, this boy is terrible. I'm going to call him um, um, son of my pain. I'm going to call him son of my sorrow. I'm going to call him son of my mourning. And you know how much power there is in, 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 you know, in, the, in your parental and parents in their words. When parents curse your identity, it's dangerous. You need, you need prayer for that. And this, and this, God had this amazing destiny for the son and the mother cursed him and she's, she spoke an identity because of her pain, because of the trauma that she went through and said, you only gave me trouble. You know, his parents told them that. It wasn't a day when you were little, you did this and you let that and I just, you know, and some people are just, you know, they sp speak such a lot of negative stuff over their children and the words have power. Yeah. And when, when uh, Jacob heard what the mom said, Jacob said, no. No, 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 this is not the identity that God said this boy should have. No, 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 I'm shifting it in the spirit. I'm changing it. I'm renaming it. You're not calling this boy son of sorrow. He is the son of promise. He is the son of my right hand. He is my honored son. And the dad came and he shifted and he canceled that words in the spirit and shifted the boy's identity back. That was at birth. So I think, you know, a lot of you, of you sitting here, you had that issue at birth. And even in the womb. Because it was being proven that when, if you are in the womb, your mother goes through a lot of trauma, a lot of rejection. It goes through to the baby. And even the words that is spoken over the sex in the baby and, and over that child, there's a reaction in the womb. And rejection can start in the womb. So let's stand. I think we get, I wanted to feel we're going to pray over that. Okay, so engage with me. We're going to pray over that. Okay, so a lot of you had rejection starting from the womb. So we're going to pray over that. We're going to break off some stuff today in the name of Jesus. Are you ready for me? Yes. Say yes. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so stand in agreement. I think pray with me. That's going to be good. Okay, one, two, three. Father, Father we, thank you we thank you for your divine revelation. Divine today, revelation. I come, today I come and I want to cancel and reverse, and reverse every negative word, every negative word that, was spoken that was spoken over my identity, over my identity while I was still in the womb. I, in the I, cancel womb. I cancel those words wherever they are in the spiritual realm. I silence them. I pull them down. I reverse them in bless, into blessings. I break. I break. I break every curse spoken. Over my God-given identity, God identity, by my mother, by my, mother, by my, father, by my father, and by other people, and by other people in our family, in our family while, I while I was still in the womb, I break that curse now, break that curse now by, the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, and I reverse it into blessings. I, it into blessings. I, bind, I bind every spirit of rejection, every spirit of, every spirit of, trauma, every spirit of trauma that have entered. That have entered close your eyes. That have entered. My mother's, womb, my mother's womb when she was pregnant with me, she was pregnant with me. through trauma, through trauma and, through and through negative emotions. I come now in the name of Jesus. I, I, bind, I bind that spirit of rejection, that spirit of, rejection, that, that spirit of trauma. That spirit of I uproot it. I uproot it. I uproot it now from my DNA, from my, DNA, from my cell structure. For my memory, for my memory. In, the in the name of Jesus, I pull it out, pull it out. and I command it to break, it to break. Over, my cell over my cell structure, over my soul, over my, soul. Over my future, over my, future. Over, my over my destiny, in the name of Jesus.
Okay, now you don't have to pray. So, Father, I pray now. I pl thank you for the spiritual transactions that happens now in this place. I bless everybody standing here. I bless your womanhood. I bless your, your, your manhood. I bless your callings. And I bless your giftings and your future as a spiritual father. I bless it. And I pray, Father, now for an alignment to come. I break the identity cursing that it came upon people's lives. That's form a demonic margin and limitation. I break it. I declare a shift over people's identity in the spirit today lord like jacob have done father with his wife i declare a shift over identities today and i trade god's identity for the enemy's identity over your life in the name of jesus and i thank you father that like you've told jeremiah that you knew us before we were conceived that you have approved of us that you have separated and set us apart for a time such as this and we just receive that father in the name of jesus amen and amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Shut up. Is the aircon on? Niemand is by warm. Robo shut up. Okay. Let's let's finish up. Let's finish up. Okay, so what happened is when this deal was 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 shifted, are you okay? Okay. Okay. When this thing was shifted around, when Benjamin grew up, um, uh, Joseph was already gone by Felicia, went to Egypt, and he was like, uh, you know, they thought he was dead. He was, he was, he was, you know, he was dead. He was gone. So poor Jacob. It was the two sons from Rachel who he loved the most. You know, Rachel was Leah was the squint one that he didn't want. So he was busy with the counterfeit, had all the kids with her. Rachel couldn't have kids. She was, you know, she was barren and she was fasting, and then she died at childbirth. Oh my goodness, what a bloodline. Anyway. So, so he was so stressed when Joseph was gone and Benjamin, his only prized possession, younger son with his lovely wife that he loved, that's all that is left. What, what do you do with a child like that? Overprotect. You overprotect that child. That child, oh, don't go here, don't go here. He was so fearful that that fear transferred to the child. He was, they were so overprotected and he was captive by fear. And everybody did th everything for him because they were so worried he's gonna, they're going to lose him. Everybody protected him. Everybody does, they did everything for him. And everybody fought his battles for him. What's going to happen? What, what do you think happened to them when you, when you do that? They don't get to get out themselves and fight their own battles. So the only way you, you build up a history with God is if you uh, develop a close relationship with God, if you fight your battles and God helps you. That's the only way you get a history with God and build relationship with God because that's the only way you get strength because every time you battle and say, thank you, Lord, you, you fought with me and you gain strength, you, you know, it's when you learn to overcome and when you learn to be victorious. You know what I'm saying? So that is so important. That's the only way. And he didn't have that. So God never intended this, this boy to be like that. And then he was the founder of the tribe of Benjamin. So the whole tribe of Benjamin, Benjamin also had a destiny. And the tribe of Benjamin, God said in Genesis 49, Benjamin, you're going to be a ravenous wolf. And in the morning, you're going to devour the prey. And at night, you're going to devour the spoil. I mean, and Benjamin was supposed to be rough, ravenous wolf. But who, who's Benjamin now? Timid, afraid, fearful, overprotected. It's not the destiny that God wanted. And this is a problem because when you grew up in circumstances in the previous season like you've had, many times we have a selfish attitude. When you, when you, when you grow up in a fearful environment, you have a lot of fear, you have a lot of um, you know, overprotection and a lot of um, those type of things. There's a selfish attitude. You have a feeling like everybody must protect me. God, you have to protect me. You have to shelter me. Why isn't people not helping me? It's my leader's responsibility to lead me and to, and to get breakthrough for me. Many times you have a victim mentality. Oh, why is everything so bad for me? You know, self-pity. Oh, terrible. Woe me. Entitlement. Well, I don't, I, I don't have money, but they have money. Why don't they give me money? I deserve it. <laughs> I'm entitled to it. You're not entitled to anything anybody has. We must focus on God. It's the spirit of entitlement. All these terrible things are then part of your belief system and your attitudes. So God needs to get it out. And this poor tribe of Benjamin are never going to get to the ravenous wolf part because they are captured in fear. So what the Lord did is, the Lord did something amazing. The Lord said, to, the Lord used David who, who came onto the scene from a different tribe. Him and Jonathan, who's, who's Saul's son from the tribe of Benjamin, they cut a covenant 
And when Jonathan saw what, 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 how, uh, how daring and how courageous David was, he said, this is what we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be, I want to be like him. So he said, let's cover, cut a covenant, and I don't want to be protected anymore, but I'm cutting a covenant, David, I will protect you. I'm shifting out of this generational line of protect me, help me, you know, God, why aren't you there for me? Why are you the me, 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 me? And he said, I'm shifting that, and God used this covenant with David and Jonathan to shift the tribe of Benjamin to their destiny. So God is saying to us in this season, this is the month, there you need to focus again on covenant relationships. Amen. The only way of overcoming the past and fulfilling your destiny is many times through covenant. And you need to know who's God, who God has placed in your life in this season and who God has placed there to take hands with you. We talked about spiritual covering last week. Um, as a spiritual covering, if you need to be here, this is a covenant relationship and we can help you get into your destiny. Where the enemy has diverted you, your covenant relationship like with Do Jonathan and David could help you to get there through this covenant alignment. So it's important to know who you need to be connected with in the season, who you need to run with. And we're going to pray now. But God says, as you are faithful in walking out your covenant relationships that God has placed in your life, you will reach your destiny. Amen. Because God can use people to help you to reach your destiny. The last thing before we're going to pray that I wanted to say is that this month of Kislev is, is, is also a meaning or the Hebrew root word for that is trust and security. So God says this is a month of coming into a new level. He wants us to come into a new level of trust, of rest and confidence in Him, in yourself and in other people. Sometimes we're not, we're not at rest and we're not at trust. We are super anxious and super fearful or whatever. And, you know, you just need to stop and say, who's God to you? What is His love to you? How do I get the trust back? How do I get the confidence and the rest back in my relationship with others, with God, and with myself? And God says, this is the month where I want you to develop that again and meditate on that in the name of Jesus. I want us, let's take up the offering and then we're going to pray. That's not work. Okay, are we ready? Okay. All right. Engage your faith as we're going to pray. And uh, that makes a big difference to, to concluding the, what the Lord wants to do in the Spirit. So let's just close our eyes and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today and we repent for covenanting with wrong belief systems, even with fear and anxiety in the season, season because of the difficulty, because of the difficulty. I, ask I ask you forgiveness by the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I want to ask you Lord, ask you, to, Lord break free, to break me free from the captivity of fear fear of the future fear of, the future. Fear of my current situation, fear of my current situation. and I want to lose, lose fear from every layer of my soul, of my soul. I lose it I loose, it I loose it through the keys of the kingdom. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you, that you have not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So I rebuke the spirit of fear. I command it to break over my soul, over my mind, over my heart in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask you to show me, Lord, ask you to show me any old patterns, any old patterns habit, patterns, habit patterns, and ways of thinking, and ways of thinking that, kept me in my old that kept me in my old identity. Holy Spirit, show me, Holy Spirit, show 
what it is. And Lord, right now, Lord, right now any, mindsets, any mindsets, any old thought patterns, any old thought patterns any sp anything, Lord, that came with deception, I ask by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will uproot it, that you will uproot it, that you will demolish it, that you will break it, break every lock on my thinking, on my understanding. And Lord, I repent of any sins that have clouded my conscience. I ask you forgiveness for every sin, every transgression, Everything I've, Everything I've done because of iniquity. Because of iniquity. Cleanse, the Cleanse the lens of my conscience, of my conscience. With, the with the blood of Jesus so I can have revelation. Help me to guard the words of my mouth because I'm the prophet I'm the of my own destiny. My own destiny. And, Lord, lastly, and Lord, lastly, I ask that you show me, you show me. who do I need to be connected with in this season, in this season through, covenant, through covenant in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty I just name. honor you, Father, honor you, Father for, shifting for shifting things regarding, regarding my identity. I thank you for a shift to my godly identity in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Does anybody have a quick word? A word? Come. Where you, you where you come uh, like into a season where you felt like almost like stagnated and it it was almost like you were praying for people and for clients but I feel like Father says in this season he's going to bring sudden clients to you and you're going to receive sudden phone calls um, from from people um, that via 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 someone heard about you and I feel like father says um, um, your business is going to excel and I feel like father says it's actually going to run ahead of you and you've got you're going to have more clients than the pre uh, than the than the previous season for I feel like father says you're coming into a new season you're coming to a into a fresh fresh season and I feel like father says to both you and your husband to Leo, I feel like Father says he's aligning the two of you, and I feel like Father says there's a merging of the two of your um, work positions that's going to be almost like aligning with one another, says the Father. And I feel like Father says there's going to be almost like Father says there's going to be um, family restoration as well in within the family circle, and I feel like Father says also. So it's out of that um, uh, that um, unity will flow. And I feel like Father says where breakthrough will come. And I feel like Father says you will see the breakthrough happening in this next season. And then this little boy over here. I, f I feel like... I feel like Father say to you, um, you're, in a, you're in a situation where there is friends that you partnering with and that you have that is not necessarily the right friends and I feel like father says it's almost like there's some um, there's some friends that want you to play almost the wrong games and games which is not necessarily from Jesus and I feel like for uh, like Jesus wants wants you to invite him invite him into your everyday into your everyday life and i feel like he wants you to 
ask him um, like is this right or is this not right and I feel like Jesus is going to come and he's going to encounter he's going to encounter you and he's going to be so close to you and he will he will start speaking he will start speaking to you and he will give you the right answers and I feel like father says you're in a season as well where you are asking him a lot of questions and I feel like father says there's a lot of the questions you've been asking him that is going to, st to start giving you says the father and then to you quibbers I also feel like father says you you you're in a season where he's going to come and in, encounter you and I feel like father says it's a it's a, you, you were in like almost a see uh, almost in a season like God is this really you or not and what I'm experience is this really you or is it not? And I feel like Father says he's going to really come and encounter you. And I feel like Father says, um, in the encountering, I feel the Father says there's a change um, in you that w that is going to start happening. And I feel like Father says even your family will see it in 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 you. And I feel like Father says there's been the you 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 you. It's almost like f I feel like Father says you came into a season where you you actually started challenging God, and where you actually in your in your in your private time in your in in your in your room actually started almost like started having communion and having communion by your having communion by yourself and i feel like father says in that way i'm going to use you and i'm going to encounter you and i feel like father says with your family your family will see the difference in you that there's something new on you says the father and i feel like father says he wants to encounter you but he also want to encounter your family and i feel like your your family is going to come certain family members are going to come to you and they're going to start questioning you uh, questioning you and asking you questions and i feel like father says in the right time you will have the right question to, uh, to, to uh, the uh, right answer to answer them because of where you came from and i also feel like father says the road where you ha have been on on your healing on your healing path where the lord has miraculously touched you i feel like father says you're going to walk in that healing healing anointing which he has healed you and I feel like father says your life is going to be a testimony and you you will testify about that healing and I feel father says as you were testifying uh, as you testify about that healing God is going to heal other people around you This is uh, a word that I have that I, I'm not sure exactly who it's for. I believe it's for somebody who's on Zoom, and it could be somebody here as well. In the story that Jesus, uh, when he was on his way, 10 lepers came to him and said to him, uh, you know, have mercy on us. And they lifted their voices and said to him, it's in Luke 17. And they said to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And now listen to this. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And I, and I believe that there's somebody, God has been speaking to you about something. And you've been sitting around waiting for something to happen. And God is saying to you, go, start, move. And then you will see things will start to happen. Amen. Amen. Good word. Thank you, John. I have a word that I believe is for a woman specifically on Zoom. Um, I just saw you in this place of depression and despondency, feeling very disappointed with um, some kind of betrayal in a relationship. And I just felt, I just saw God saying, you need to 
kick off your old shoes. You need to take off your old garments. And I see him just putting a new garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and new shoes, which are for dancing, but also for the, sp the shoes of the gospel of peace. And I just believe that God really wants to give you his joy even though it seems like the darkest night of your life he wants to give you his joy and i also just felt a verse that um the lord gave me which is um uh, also very much i think in line with what anton ministered today but it's in psalm 39 verse 1 to 2 and it says here's my life motto the truth i live by i will guard my ways for all my days i will speak only what is right guarding what i speak like a watchman guards against an attack of the enemy i will guard and muzzle my mouth when the wicked are around me i will remain silent and will not grumble or speak out of my disappointment and i just feel like very much in line with what um, anton preached today that god wants you to be careful what the enemy will try and get you to speak or to curse your own destiny during this time of disappointment he wants you to remind yourself and go over the promises that he has spoken over your life and speak life even in the midst of the darkness you will call light out of darkness amen, amen. amen. thank you so much for tuning in with us and join us all we have time for and uh, we wish we could go on we pray that the word will bless you and we seal it in your life and we'll see you next week be blessed.